Hello and welcome to my video all about how to read cable knitting charts. When I was starting to learn how to knit cables, I found cable charts very intimidating. I was used to reading written instructions mainly and cable charts just looked very complicated and it was very overwhelming to try and read them. So in this video, I'm going to break down the symbols that are used in cable charts to make them a little simpler and easier to understand. And I'm also going to go through how to read charts in general, whether that's for flat knitting or circular knitting. One of the complications with cable charts is that the author of the cable chart chooses what style of symbol to use. And this can differ between charts. So that can make it a little bit more confusing because the same symbols aren't necessarily used on every chart. And that's why it's so important to look at the key on your individual cable chart, because that will tell you exactly what you're supposed to do for each symbol. In this video, I'm going to focus on the style of cable symbol as shown on screen now. This is the symbol for cables that I see most often. And so I'm going to assume it's the most popular and I'm going to try and stick with the most commonly used symbols in this video. In a cable chart, this cable symbol will lie on a grid. If the symbol is stretched over four stitches, it means that the cable is worked over four stitches. Two symbols that you'll definitely find on your cable chart are as follows. The knit stitch and the purl stitch. In this video, I'm going to assume that we're knitting from a flat knitting pattern. However, later on, I will talk a little bit about how to read a circular pattern instead. One very important note is that a cable chart always shows your knitting from the right side or the front. So a blank square or a white square on your cable chart always represents a knit stitch on the right side. And usually it's a greyed out or shaded square that represents a purl stitch on the right side. However, when we're knitting the wrong side of the knitting, those blank or white squares will instead represent purl stitches and the shaded or greyed out squares will represent knit stitches. So the white squares will overall represent stockinette stitch and the greyed out squares will overall represent reverse stockinette stitch. I'll be talking a little bit more about this later on. As I said before, there are variations between cable charts and their symbols. And here you can see a few of those variations. And this is only for knit and purl stitches. Sometimes you'll see a horizontal or vertical line inside the square. And sometimes you'll see a dot representing the purls. So you can't just assume that one single symbol represents one single type of stitch on every chart. And a few more symbols you might see are a circle to represent a yarn over or a kind of upside down Y to represent an SSK on the right side or an SSP on the wrong side or a K2 tog on the right side and a P2 tog on the wrong side. I really like these symbols because they are a visual representation of the stitches that they're representing. So a yarn over can be used to make a hole in your knitting. And so I see the circle and it makes me think of a yarn over. The SSK is a left leaning decrease and you can see that the diagonal line in the symbol leans to the left and the K2 tog is a right leaning decrease and you can see that the long diagonal line in the square leans to the right. So I find those symbols very straightforward. Okay, so now we're going to look more closely at the actual cable symbols. I showed you an example earlier and now I'm going to show you how one is formed and why that symbol is used to represent a cable. So that first screen that I showed you was a symbol representing a two slash two RC or a two over two right cross. And that's basically where two knit stitches cross over two knit stitches. So how does that action translate into a cable symbol? So in this diagram, we have a right leaning cable strand that's two stitches wide in red and a left leaning cable strand that's two stitches wide in blue. The right leaning cable strand will have to be at the front because it's a right cross. And that's what makes up the symbol that you see on cable charts, obviously without the colors. 
I'm quite a visual person, so when I found this out, I found out how the cable symbols were formed in the first place. I really found that a great help. Now we're going to look at each shape on this cable symbol. When you're first presented with a cable symbol like this, I think the very first thing you should do is look at the diagonal section in the centre, which in this case I've coloured red. You know that this is the part of the cable that's at the front, on the right side of the knitting. And in this example you can see that it's right leaning, so you already know it's a right cross cable. The symbol will be sitting on a grid, and however many squares this symbol is stretched across is how many stitches are in this cable. So here you can see that that diagonal section is across two stitches. So now we know that the front strand of the cable is two stitches wide and leans to the right. The reason the numbers are kind of written in reverse here is because in cable charts you read from the right hand side to the left hand side when you're reading right side rows. And here I've added a blue line and a green line which are both two stitches long. We've already covered that the diagonal section is two stitches wide, but that triangle at the top of the symbol is also two stitches wide and is also very important. So the triangle that's above the diagonal section in any cable symbol is equally as important as that diagonal section. You'll notice that I've shaded the top triangle and the left hand side triangle in red. And you will usually find that in cable charts, these two triangles are the same colour and are kind of lumped together. However, you can just ignore that left hand triangle. The important triangle is the one above the diagonal section. The triangles on the left hand side and on the right hand side merely represent the sort of background stitches to the cable that run on from the previous row. So it's not really relevant to the cable that you're knitting right now. The same is true for the triangle underneath the diagonal section. This triangle does not tell you how to knit the cable. It merely tells you how the cable stitches were worked in the previous row. This is supposed to make the process clearer and also to confirm that you're in the right place on the chart. However, this can be ignored, especially if you're a beginner. So my advice is to just concentrate on the diagonal section and the triangle above that diagonal section. All other triangles can be ignored, however they do give you a few pointers if you wish to know them. In this diagram I'm showing you the difference between a 2 over 2 right purl cross and a 2 over 2 left purl cross. You can see that in both cable symbols, the triangles above and below the diagonal section are shaded grey. So these are purl stitches. So let's break down that symbol at the top for the 2 over 2 right purl cross. We can see that the diagonal section is 2 stitches wide. And you can see that those are knit stitches. So here we're dealing with a stockinette cable strand. This means that you're passing 2 knit stitches over 2 purl stitches. And those 2 stitches were purls on the previous row also. If you remember from my previous videos, the right cross involves putting stitches onto the cable needle and then putting that cable needle behind your knitting. So the stitches that are going onto the cable needle in this case will be two purl stitches. If we move onto the symbol at the bottom, it's very, very similar except it's a left cross. We know that in left crosses, the stitches that are put onto the cable needle are held in front of your knitting instead. So in this case, it's going to be the two knit stitches that are going to be put onto the cable needle. Now if we look at these symbols, you'll notice that the triangles underneath the diagonal sections are now white. So what does this mean for the cables that you're going to knit? Well, it means absolutely no change whatsoever. And that's because, as I said before, the triangles underneath the diagonal section can be ignored because that triangle at the bottom just refers to the previous row. So here you can see that those cable symbols represent exactly the same cables as the previous symbols do. 
The only difference is that on the previous row, the stitches that are going to form the cable strand behind were knit stitches rather than purls. Okay, so now let's have a look at a longer cable symbol. This one is eight stitches wide, as represented by the numbers. Each number represents a stitch or a square on the cable chart grid. Hopefully straight away you'll be able to see that the symbol at the top is a right cross and the symbol at the bottom is a left cross and there are only knit stitches involved in both of these cables. If we look at how wide the diagonal sections are, you can see that they are four numbers or four stitches wide. The triangles above the diagonal sections are also four stitches wide. So what we have here is a four over four right cross at the top and four over four left cross at the bottom. Next, I've drawn out four cable symbols on a grid so that you can test yourself. So feel free to pause the video now and try and work out what these cable symbols represent. This isn't a proper cable chart or anything because I haven't put the numbers at the side and we're also going to be reading from the top to the bottom rather than from the bottom to the top. We can see that all of the squares in this particular grid are white, so we know no pearls are involved in any of these cables. We've already covered the symbol at the top in the video already and we can see that it's a left cross with two knit stitches going over two knit stitches. So this is a two over two left cross. We can see that the next symbol down is only worked over two squares or two stitches. We can see that both cable strands are only one stitch wide and it's left leaning. So this is a one over one left cross. We can then see that the two cable symbols at the bottom are representing unequal cables in that the number of stitches being passed over the top is different to the number of stitches being passed underneath. So in the third cable symbol down, we have a left leaning diagonal section that's two stitches wide. And this is going over a cable strand that's only one stitch wide. So this is a two over one left cross. And the next cable down is also an uneven or unequal cable with a cable strand that's one stitch wide being passed over a cable strand that's two stitches wide. Again, it's left leaning, so this is a one over two left cross. Now we're going to move on to something a little bit more difficult by looking at cables that involve ribbing. Now, ribbing involves alternating knit stitches and purl stitches. And you can see that the triangle above the diagonal section in this symbol is segmented. In fact, it's halved with the left half being gray or shaded and the right half being white or blank. Now, because we read the right side rows on a cable chart from right to left, we read the ribbing in that triangle at the top from right to left as well. Okay, so if we break this cable symbol down, we can see that it's a left cross with the front strand being two stitches wide and made of knit stitches. The cable strand behind was made of purl stitches on the previous row. However, now that back cable strand will be knit in single rib stitch instead. Essentially, this is a two over two left cross However, the stitches that go behind are going to be a knit one and then a purl one. In this next example, we're still going to be doing the single rib stitch for the cable strand passing behind. However, this time the cable strand passing in front is a right cross and is three stitches wide. The cable strand passing behind is also three stitches wide and as I said, is single rib stitch. And if we read it from right to left, that's a purl one, knit one, purl one. It's essentially a three over three right cross, but with the cable strand at the back being in single rib stitch. If you want to know how to knit this, you would be slipping three stitches onto the cable needle and holding that at the back. 
then knitting three stitches for that front strand and then doing a purl one, knit one, purl one from the cable needle. In this next example, the diagonal section is ribbed this time, again with single ribbing. Reading from right to left, again it's purl one, knit one, purl one and it's a right cross. The cable strand going behind, as you can see, is three stitches wide and they're all purl stitches. So to knit this one, you would slip three stitches purl wise to the cable needle and hold the cable needle at the back. You would then purl one, knit one, purl one for the front strand and then you would purl all of the stitches off the cable needle. Essentially, it's a three over three right purl cross but with a ribbed front strand. And this time, the strand going in front and the one going behind are both ribbed. Each strand is a knit one, then a purl one, then a knit one. And of course, it's a right cross. To knit this cable, you would slip three stitches purl wise to the cable needle and hold the cable needle at the back. You would then knit one, purl one, knit one from the left hand needle and then knit one, purl one, knit one from the cable needle and that would form this cable. Essentially, it's a three over three right cross, but with both strands in single ribbing. You may have noticed that the triangle on the left has a small section of gray inside. As I said before, this isn't relevant to the cable that you're knitting right now, and so can be ignored. However, I'm just going to show you why you might see something like this sometimes. In this diagram, I've shown the row above and below this cable symbol. And you can see that column two is all gray, i.e. it's all purl stitches. The reason that the triangle inside the cable symbol has that small gray area is simply to sort of show you the bigger picture. It's just a continuation of that column of purl stitches passing behind that cable. Right, so now we're going to get on to how to read a cable chart. So far, I've assumed that all of the cable charts offer flat knitting. So we're knitting back and forth rather than in the round. In flat knitting cable charts, you'll have the odd numbers on the right and the even numbers on the left. And these numbers represent the row number. You turn your work over between rows in flat knitting. Hence, you're knitting back and forth, so you're knitting both right and wrong side rows. The odd numbers nearly always represent the right side or the front of the knitting, and the even numbers represent the wrong side or the back of the knitting. The number one will be in the bottom right corner, and that's where you always start reading a chart. You always read horizontally from the number. So in this case, you would start at number one and read from the right to the left horizontally. In your key that will be next to the chart, it will tell you what to do for each symbol. So in this case, we only have knits and purls represented. A blank or white square represents a knit stitch on the right side and a purl stitch on the wrong side. So overall, that will create stockinette stitch. The grey or shaded square represents a purl on the right side and a knit on the wrong side. And overall, that creates reverse stockinette stitch. So we will read from number one first from right to left. Remembering that odd numbers represent the right side of the knitting. So reading from right to left, we would see a white square, which is a knit stitch because we're on the right side. Then a grey square, which will be a purl and then a white square, which will be a knit stitch. Then we would move up to row number two. So we would start from where the number is and read from left to right. In this case, the first square is gray. Now, remember that even numbers represent the wrong side. So on this row, the gray squares represent knit stitches and the white squares represent purl stitches. So basically on every even numbered row, we're reversing what we would do on a right side row. So on the right side row, we would purl the gray square 
but on an even numbered row, we would knit it. Unfortunately, this is just the complication of flat knitting charts, and it's certainly more difficult than reading a circular knitting chart. An important thing to note about cable charts in particular is that if a cable cross is on the wrong side row, then it is also reversed. So a right cross will become a left cross. So that's another thing you must remember. Okay, so reading from number two, from left to right, the gray square would mean it would be a knit stitch, the white square would represent a purl stitch, and the gray square would represent a knit stitch. And then we're on to row number three, which is a right side row, and we read from right to left. So it's a white square, which is a knit stitch, gray square, which is a purl stitch, and lastly, a white square, which is a knit stitch. And that's how you would knit this particular chart. If we just have a quick look at the same pattern, but on a circular knitting chart, you'll see that all of the numbers this time are on the right hand side. And that's because we'd be knitting in the round. So we'd be constantly knitting the right side. We would never knit the wrong side like we would in flat knitting. This makes it easier to read a circular knitting chart because you never have to reverse how you read the symbols. As you can see in this key, the white squares always represent knit stitches and the gray squares always represent pearls. So again, we'd start at number one and go from right to left. So it would be knit, purl, knit. Then we move up to number two and again go from right to left. So it'd be a purl, a knit and then a purl. Row number three would be a knit, a purl and then a knit. And as you can see, it's just clearer to read this kind of chart. Unfortunately, most cable charts are flat knitting charts, but hopefully this mini tutorial has helped make it a little bit clearer and less confusing. Okay, so now we're moving on to looking at actual cable charts. As you can see, it's a flat knitting chart because there are numbers on both sides. There are eight rows and nine columns. As you'll find in normal cable charts, the cable symbols are on the right side rows. Okay, so if we look at row number one and we read from right to left, you first start with two knit stitches. Then we get onto the cable symbol. You can see that it's a left leaning cable where the front strand is two stitches wide. You can see that the cable strand passing behind is two stitches wide and made from purl stitches. So this is a two over two left purl cross. And then we do three knit stitches to finish the row. For row number two, we begin with five purl stitches because remember that the symbols are reversed on even numbered or wrong side rows. We then do two knit stitches and then two purl stitches. For row number three, we would do two knits, two purls, and then a cable. This cable we've already covered, and it's a two over two left cross. And then we finish with one knit stitch. Row number four would be five purl stitches, two knits, and then two purls. Row number five would be two knits, and then a cable, that again is basically the same as the one on row one, but is a right cross rather than a left cross. So it's a two over two right purl cross. Then we finish with three knit stitches. Row number six is three purls, two knits, four purls. Row number seven is basically the same as the one in row three, but is a right cross instead. So it's a two over two right cross. Then we do two purls and three knits. For row number eight, we do three purls, two knits, four purls. And that's it, that's quite a simple cable chart. Now we're going to move on to something a little bit more complicated. So for row one, we would start with two knit stitches and you can see that the next cable is quite unusual in that the front strand is purl stitches and it's being passed over two knit stitches. So this is a two over two right purl cross 
but the pearls are unusually at the front. Then we do one purl stitch, one knit stitch and one purl stitch. For row number two, we do one knit stitch, one purl stitch, one knit stitch and then six purl stitches. For row number three, we start with three purls and then we get onto a ribbed cable. You can see that it's six stitches wide in total with three stitches being passed over another three stitches. The front three are knit stitches and the back three are purl one, knit one, purl one. So essentially it's a three over three left purl cross but with a single ribbed cable strand passing behind. Row number four is three purls, one knit, one purl, one knit, three purls. Row number five is four purls, one knit, one purl, three knits. Row number six is three purls, one knit, one purl, one knit, three purls. And row number seven again is a cable that's six stitches wide. And this time it's the front strand that is single ribbed. So in this cable, purl one, knit one, purl one is passed over three purl stitches. And it's a right cross. Then we do three knit stitches. And for row eight, it's three purls, four knits, two purls. And finally, the last topic that I'm really going to cover is the kind of cable that has three numbers in its abbreviation. So for instance, one over two over one right cross or two over two over two left purl cross, that kind of cable. Because there are three numbers in the cable abbreviation, this basically means that there are three parts to these kind of cables. And this kind of abbreviation you would find where two cables cross over each other on a cable chart. Okay, so let's have a closer look at this cable. In the previous cable symbols we've been discussing, there have been two diagonals basically crossing over each other. And here we have the same sections as shown in red and yellow. The red section is the normal diagonal section that represents the front strand and tells you if it's a right or left cross. In this case, it's a right cross. The strand passing behind is represented by the yellow colour. And just like the front strand, it's two stitches wide in this example. So those sections should already be familiar to you. However, there is one extra section which I've coloured in grey, which is the triangle at the top centre of this symbol. This is the only extra section that you need to worry about in this kind of symbol. It simply represents the central number in the abbreviation. In this particular example, the symbol represents a two over two over two right cross. Now the first two in that abbreviation represents the front diagonal section. So that's the front strand of the cable and it's two stitches wide. The second number in that abbreviation, which is also two, represents that top triangle section that's in gray. And again, this section is two stitches wide. And finally, the last number in the abbreviation represents the cable strand that passes behind, which is in yellow. And again, it's two stitches wide. Now that central number represents that central section, which represents the stable stitches in the cable. If you don't know what stable stitches are, I would recommend that you look at my other videos all about this kind of cable with the three numbers in the abbreviation. Basically though, these stitches do not move left or right. That's why they're represented by that central section in the symbol. So in this particular example, the red stitches, which are knit stitches, move four stitches to the right and the yellow stitches move four stitches to the left. But the gray stitches stay in that same position in the center of that overall six stitch cable. The same rule applies in that if that triangle at the top is blank or white, then those are knit stitches. And if it's gray or shaded out, then those are purl stitches. So in this case, it's a purl cross. 
So it's a 2 over 2 over 2, right purl cross. Now we're going to look at a more uneven example of this kind of cable. And this symbol in particular is stretched across 9 stitches. That means that the three numbers in the cable abbreviation must add up to nine. You can see that the front strand is right leaning and measures four stitches wide. The strand behind is also four stitches wide and the strand in the middle, which is the stable stitches, is only one single stitch and it's gray, so it's a purl stitch. That means overall we've got four stitches going over that one central purl stitch, going over another four knit stitches. So it's a four over one over four, right purl cross. And obviously four plus one plus four equals nine. Here we have a cable chart that includes both types of symbol that we've covered in this video. On row one, we would do two knit stitches, and then we would do a cable cross that is worked over six stitches. We can see that the diagonal section at the front leans to the right, so it's a right cross. And that front strand is two stitches wide. Then the triangle at the top in the middle is gray, so we know that those stitches are pearls. And we also know that that strand, which represents the stable stitches, is two stitches wide. And then the other diagonal strand that lies behind is also two stitches wide. And both of those crossing strands are in knit stitches only. So we would write this as a two over two over two, right purl cross, where the purls are the stable stitches in that central triangle. Then we would knit two to finish the row. On row number two, we would do four purl stitches two knit stitches and four purls. Then on row three, it will be a cable to start. The diagonal section is two stitches wide and leans to the right, whilst the triangle in the top left is gray and is also two stitches wide. So this is a two over two right purl cross, where the stitches passing behind are going to be the purls. Then we would do two purl stitches and then basically the mirror image of the previous cable. So that cable would be a two over two left purl cross. Then row four would be two purls, six knits, two purls. And that completes that cable chart. And to finish, I'm just going to show you one variation of the cable symbol, which I have seen used. The first thing you can see is that it's worked over six stitches. Then if you look at the diagonal part of the black line, you can see that it's left leaning. So this is a left cross. The horizontal sections of the black line cover three stitches each. So this would be a three over three left cross. And you can see that all the squares are white, so there are no pearls involved. So this is an example of how much the cable symbol can vary between cable charts. So you just have to take them as they are in your particular pattern. Hopefully though, in this video, I'm making them seem a little bit clearer. You will mostly find that cable patterns are represented by charts rather than written instructions. So it's really useful to know how to read them. Once you get the hang of reading charts, they really will help to simplify your knitting. I hope this video has been helpful to you and thank you very much for watching.